All right, everybody. All right, I will call the uh, Wednesday, September 25th, 2024 uh, meeting of the Essex Junction City Council to order. Do we have any agenda additions or changes from council or staff? I do not. I don't know. All right, we can move right along uh, to public to be heard. This is the portion of the meeting where members of the public can bring comments, concerns, questions to the council on items that are and are not on the agenda. So I don't see anybody in the room. And by the way, we are now meeting in the coal board room at Brownell Library while Toon Lincoln is being renovated. Appreciate the library hosting us um, tonight. I'm not seeing anybody in the room and I'm not seeing anyone on Zoom with a hand raised right now. So we'll give that a minute, or a little less than a minute. And without seeing anyone raise a hand, I think we will move on to the first business item, uh, 5A, uh, department head brief uh, with our HR director, Colleen Dwyer, who's joining us virtually. Hi, Colleen. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. And thanks for letting me participate on Zoom. I wasn't feeling great and didn't want to get anybody else sick. Um, nice to see you. So um, I've only done this one other time, so I'm not recalling the exact order, but um, just going to start by giving a little bit of an overview of what um, hiring and recruitment has looked like over the past um, year. So we've had um, we have one open position for public works, um, which has been open for quite some time. Um, we've hired about uh, 11 people and had 12 openings um, because of people moving on. Um, Essex Junction, the EGRP program is regularly hiring after school people. So that's um, kind of a rolling thing that happens quite often. Uh, so if anybody knows people in public works or for after school, please look at our website and uh, put an application in. Um, the other thing that Raj, Regina, and I did over um, the course of the past six months is participate in VLTC's welcoming and engaging um, cohort. It was a collaboration with Abundant Sun. About 12 municipalities participated. Um, they did some surveying of our um, of our organization. About 53% of the people completed it. Um, some of the information we gained from that was that um, Essex Junction is a great place to live. Um, and we have some work to do around um, it being a great, equally a great place to work at. Um, so that, and then um, we, spent a lot of time on the contract and that was um, a challenging, complicated uh, process. I'm glad we got to the end, but it was kind of hard on, I think everybody. Um, I think everybody's intentions were good. Uh, everybody was trying um, to get their needs met. And I think we um, eventually came to a good conclusion. Um, so thinking uh, forward, we are currently working on a um, evaluation guidelines, which part of that came out of um, the contract work. Um, so we're gonna work on establishing some guidelines and, and work on training folks um, on how to do that um, fairly equitable, equitably. Uh, and VLCT is gonna be helping us with that as well. Um, currently in the throes of redoing and updating the personnel regs. So you all will see that at some point. Um, and then um, we are reintroducing a process that happened before uh, Gina or I were here um, for open enrollment in giving people kind of more information before open enrollment. So talking about plan designs, different carriers, the overview of the current state of healthcare, um, and hopefully kind of allow for a more um, engaged and transparent um, process for employees. Any questions for me? Anyone? Yes, Lynn. Thank you. Um, hi, Colleen. Thank you hi. very much. Um, just curious, the the 
comment you made about we had some work to do about making Essex Junction a great place to work as well as live. And yeah. in conjunction with your experience with the Abundant Sun, the welcoming communities experience, yeah. what are your thoughts about how to improve that situation? Well, I mean, I think it's multifaceted, but the thing that sticks out most for me is um, when I think about your role, your role as city councils, councilors, is that you are um, you're controlling the budget the budget impacts uh, employees' salaries and benefits. And um, I think last year's budget, the contract negotiations were really hard on staff. And, you know, just seeing some of the process of hiring, I think it would be important to recognize when you're doing the budget that um, the people who do the work in the city need to be paid um, a uh, competitive wage and we need to have benefits that entice which i i we have great benefits but i hope they stay because it's a helpful tool in uh retaining and recruiting staff so if i can ask a follow-up yes, so what you're saying is it's not so much the culture of the there's part no there's part of that too i mean i think you have to recognize that um, it's a whole, you know, we talk about that being a new city, but um, well, I agree with that. There's also history with that. So it's not really a clean slate. So there's like these competing, uh, I don't know if narrative is the right word, but um, competing ways of being from what it used to be and what it is now and how things have evolved and, um, you know, that's really a challenge for staff, you know, to try to wrap their head around, especially folks who have been with the city for a long time um, and try change is slow. Um, that's why I think we need to be working towards more transparency. Um, and I think we are trying to listen to employees and hear what they're saying and try to kind of make um kind of demonstrate that we are uh hearing what they're saying and when possible taking their suggestions and moving it forward that's helpful thank you can i add one thing Certainly. to that um so i am remembering when we got that report from um the net promoter score on the uh, uh, welcoming and engaging communities. And we talked with Jude about that. She said, it's it's pretty hard the way that the study was done to really pinpoint what the specific challenges are with our staff and why it's scored that way. So she encouraged that we really just have to figure that out for ourselves <clears throat> internally. We have to figure out how to start ha to have those conversations and um, start to dig a little bit deeper to understand what really that that rub is. And I think we can see and hear, obviously, that there is this old versus new kind of where are we <laughs> um, issue going on. But also there might be some other stuff that we're not entirely clear what's happening there. And we have to really kind of do some work and what's actually going on there. Thanks. Yeah. You're good? Yeah, you've got a question. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm really sure if you were saying no. Yeah, yeah, no sorry. Okay. Um, so would you mind, Colleen, and, and again, I, I want to say thank you from, from myself personally, because um, you've spent some time some concerns that I had and, and bouncing some ideas off you from uh, from as an HR professional. So I appreciate your time with me. Um, but I did want to ask you a question um, in regard to recruitment and retention. Where are you seeing the challenges come from? Um, I know recently uh, in the last couple of months, I've heard more stories of from the private sector. We're seeing challenges come from other municipalities. Can you speak to some of that so that our community understands where we're facing challenges and trying to find and keep our good staff? Yeah, um, it is a challenging labor market. 
Um, there's a, I think it's 2.2% uh, unemployment rate in the state of Vermont. Uh, things have not fully recovered since uh, COVID started in terms of human beings able to do that, the work needed. I think what I've seen, um, particularly around the public works part, is that there is higher wages um, in similar job fields that they can easily make to, you know, between five and $10 more an hour. Um, they might ha not have um, the benefits that the city offers, but I think when you're tasked with trying to figure out how to pay your bills versus like have health insurance and time off, that's always going to be a priority for folks. So um, at times it's been hard to say, you know, we want this person, um, but we're also concerned that like, we're going to lose them eventually because of um, the salary or they're not going to accept because of it. So um, it is multifaceted and it's not the only problem. It's the, there's not enough people to do the work. There's um, everybody's trying to hire the same group of people and that can be difficult. Thank you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Colleen. If you want to continue, Thank that's great. Thank you. Oh, I, is, she, is she done? She oh, I thought she had more. I thought she was going to. Oh, uh, no. I, I, I thought you Thank said, you. <laughs> Raj, I saw you said, oh, thank you. All right. We're all done. Oh, was was like, great. Okay. Oh, that was, that was quick. Uh, I, I guess when you uh, finished earlier, I thought there might be some more that you were going to come back to, but you wanted questions initially. So. Uh, oh, yeah. No, no. I mean, I just think that I, I do appreciate um, the work that you all do. I don't think you are uh, have easy an easy job. Um, and I do think that, um, you know, there's times where staff might come to you and talk to you about things. And I think it's important for those things to be kind of Regina's job is to, to ask, execute the policies and procedures that you implement. And so making sure that she has that information so that she can look at it from a holistic perspective to, to make sure the we keep those employees because we want to get to the root of any issues that they have and um, making sure it's kind of streamlined through a good system is important. Um, I also just would say you're welcome to do um, facility tours. You know, uh, you're welcome to come to uh, staff gatherings or celebrations. Um, and I think it would be nice to see some folks there. I also recognize how busy you guys are and this is um this is on top of your everyday lives. No, I appreciate that. I think um, I think we're all eager to be as supportive um, as we possibly can. I think this is such a small community and certainly a small staff um, and a fairly tight knit staff that I think we all, speaking for myself, feel a tremendous responsibility to that and to to show up. Um, but I think all of us, you know, this is very much a working board. Um, yeah. in the sense that we all have very busy day jobs and it's, for, you know, so I, I hope that employees that were able to get out and, and do some kind of recognition and have some time. Oh, wait a second. Wait a second. Oh, um, can, you guys are frozen. Uh, Amber's yeah. not, but everybody else, everybody else is. I didn't hear Can't anything. Stop. I heard up to like the working board, and then it kind of froze. Well, I just, I just hope that. Um, I'll wait to see if we're we're back on. Hold on. I definitely can hear you, but it's a weird picture. Oh, I just saw myself. Hi, there you guys are. Okay, no, it's totally fine. I understand? Um, I was. I think I was just saying. Um, you know, we we want to find. You know, 
try not to speak too much for everybody else, but I think the general consensus is that we want to find time to um, spend with staff, appreciate staff, really recognize the work that's being done here. It's a very small group of very dedicated people. I think speaking for myself, it's very difficult to be present when they're working and, and when they're around um, because I'm also working at the same time. Uh, so, right. I, you know, I hope that the lack of contact lately isn't taken as a lack of interest is very much um, a tremendous amount of pride in the work that's done um, in the city and, um, and appreciation. So, um, but I, I also appreciate what you're talking about, about boundaries in terms of, you know, understanding the board's role, the manager's role and, and how that all plays out and how that can impact, um, the workplace and relationships. I think it's important to, to keep those lines. Um, and that just means we'll have to find, um, some good opportunities to, to really spend, um, you know, having that time for interaction with, with the folks that actually make the community work. Um, yeah. You know, to Colleen, there, there was just a, an event at Maple Street Park the other day yes. for, for staff. Uh, I was one of those that was a taco event yeah. on Tuesday. Very fitting. <laughs> uh, but those are the, those are the things that, you know, I think help build right yeah. so they're the things that build the relationships to bring people closer that get the team united and so i didn't know if you could maybe speak on that event just a little bit sure. uh i thought about going but i didn't get an official invitation so oh. i just stayed away because i didn't want to call out i didn't want to cross that boundary uh and so i I'm curious if you can just speak to that for sure. a couple of minutes and, you know, it was sure. uh, who was invited and where it was, yeah. but, well, you know, that kind of. Yeah. And actually, I know you're in the room too, as you can help out um, or add anything, but um, Ashley and Joanne were um, very helpful in, in coordinating this event. Um, it was just simply taking an hour out of folks time to head down to Maple Street Park. We had great weather. Um, we use local vendors of Elgato and um, Cole's Cookies to um, support our staff and support co local community businesses. Um, and just kind of just getting people together that um, in one place to just kind of like talk and and spend time together and and acknowledge one another i mean there's been there was a few folks like uh cindy delabeck um christina mclaughlin who's been with the city for 15 years um sarah ellis and marissa labee have been um at the library for five years um and so just like acknowledging them and um just doing a like a fun activity that everybody can participate in um and try to have like friendly competition. Um, it's also good to have everybody together because we work in such, I think this is also the hardest thing for this, for the city is that, you know, there's folks down at Maple Street, there's folks on Jackson Street and down at Cascade and to Lincoln and Brownell, like we're all separated and we're all working for one community, but we don't always overlap. So like um, that, that's really helpful. And just um, every first Friday of the month, we try to have pizza down at EJRP, which um, I think is a nice event, but um, all staff were invited part, full and part-time. Um, I uh, saw Keith and AJ LeClaire at the firehouse, tried to get them to come down, um, but AJ was in between jobs and um, I'm sure Keith was running on zero hours of sleep at that point, but um, so just, you know, always wanting the, you know, everybody to come and join and um, have some food and there was leftover. So um, you could probably run into to Lincoln and grab some food after, after this. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of black beans <laughs> left over. Thank, thank you very much for that, yeah. Colleen. I, it sounds yeah. like it was a great event. It's the absolutely the type of stuff I'd love to see. And I'm so glad that the weather was, was, great for yeah. it so yeah and we have taking... yeah and we have a little um we with our insurance company um we have a little 
money for wellness. So we've uh, offered chair massages for a 15 minute chair massage for anybody who wants to sign up. So um, just trying to do these smaller things to help people um, feel appreciated and acknowledged. Um, no, just um, add one one thing to that, um, that I think, uh, though, we've have been trying to do these staff events like this twice a year. Mm -hmm. um, so we will have another one again in the fall. And I do think those are awesome opportunities to invite the city council to to participate yeah. in if you'd like. And the one that we do later on, we do try to do it towards the later part of the day. So people can stay and hang out if they want to. We did that at um, on tap last year. So um, we'll we'll definitely invite you folks. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. We appreciate you coming. Thank you. Um, Thanks for all you guys I'm do. Serious. Thank you. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you. Thank Take you. care. Have a great night. You too. Bye, guys. All right. Um, we'll just move on to uh, Chinning County Regional Planning Commission annual report and presentation. We have Charlie Baker from CCRPC with us. Thank you for coming. Yeah, thank you for uh, providing time on your agenda. I do sincerely appreciate it. And uh, this works fine. Thank <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, venue and standing. Uh, um, Charlie, just so you know, Kristen is online, just so you're aware. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> I trust fraud. Yeah. Um, I appreciate it. <laughs> oh, and you've got Sarah must get on here too. Yeah, Sarah's from uh, my staff. I'll um, touch on that. So um, I have kind of my traditional customer service check-in annual report, but um, also a second item really having to do with uh, what is Act 181, which is the Act 250 bill that passes here. Uh, and we have some work to do to implement that bill that uh, I want to just introduce to you and make sure you're uh, aware of, um, which is why Sarah's backing me up. Um, so uh, with regard to the annual report, um, I think you got this in your packet. Um, the um, I'll just run through this real quickly and then um, ask for any feedback. Um, but the first page, uh, give you some background on the RPC and how we uh, leverage uh, local dollars of about half a million to bring in about five and a half million to federal and state funds last fiscal year. Um, uh, I just want to thank your representatives on our board. Thank you, Elaine, for her service last year. You're missed this year. Um, no offense to new appointees. Missed you guys too. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you. Um, and, and really, and all of your team that are participating in our committees are valuable members, and we do appreciate that. Um, and I hope they're getting value out of it as well. Um, the second uh, and on to the third page are more specific things that we did with the city last fiscal year, um, ranging from stormwater and GIS mapping uh, to this uh, transit oriented master planning project. We got a federal grant um, to uh, provide $100,000 to the city to do that work. I think we're in process, that's going, mm -hmm. right? It's called um, Connect the Junction. Connect the Junction. I'm glad you didn't make me guess. <laughs> did not know that. Um, and uh, and then other technical assistance, uh, some land use oriented, some more transportation oriented. Um, and um, yeah, so happy to take any feedback if you have any. Um, I know, you know we're largely working with your staff on these things and maybe with the planning commission or, or other bodies, but any feedback that you have for me or things we can improve on or? I mean, right off the bat, it's a it's an impressive list um, of support and knowledge and assistance um, and information. It's, it's it's I think if folks have the time to to get our packet offline and, and take a look at everything that all the partnerships and all the work that um, CCRPC and the data they bring to the city, I think it's worthwhile. Um, it would be difficult to get through it the whole list in under an hour, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, here, um, so I'll just start with that, but does anybody have anything specific? No. Uh, it was an interesting read for sure. There's some things I had forgotten about <laughs> yeah. um, that were being done. And certainly right, we're in the middle of Connect the Junction, which is pretty exciting. Um, a little worrisome in the face of uh, post GMT cuts. Um, yes. So I know you're all involved in some of that work as well and advising GMT or providing data for them. Um, Anything you can continue to do to keep that service running as much as it runs or more in our right. community would 
we may have some more <laughs> collective conversation about that. Um, you know, because I think uh, some of those answers are probably down in Montpelier. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, I'm kind of viewing uh, the process this fall as getting prepared for the legislative session. So yeah, um, yeah let's, uh, yeah, I do think uh, you're, you have good company. Every municipality that I've been in has this, is, is, is very concerned about uh, the cup access, the potential cup access service there. Um, and I, you have had Clayton uh, mm -hmm. come and talk to you. Okay, good. Yeah. I've been trying yeah. to make sure that's, that's yeah. happening. I think, it, you know, it's also important to note, I think, too, that it's it's not, I mean, you know, GMT is proposing these cuts. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think it's anything they want to do. Exactly. Yeah. And that's why I was very, um, I specifically used the word potential. Right. You know, because um, they, yeah, they do not want to do this. I know um, they're making some progress on that issue. Uh, from, I think, the, the um, gap, I think it was uh, 3 million. I think they're down closer to 2, two million. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they'll get closer um, and make it something that is workable. So right. that's fingers crossed. And, uh, and at the same time, you know, I think it's also forcing them to really examine, you know, where they're spending money, how they're spending money and which, how they're providing service. And, you know, maybe they'll get to a little bit better service plan as a result of this too. So I'm hoping there's some silver lining, but yeah. that's fine. I have to be optimistic. Did you have a? I just. I, sorry, like, my, sorry. I just wanted to make a comment, and um, I'm a little biased because I was the former representative on the commission. But um, for the sheer variety and volume of services that DCRPC provides at Six Junction, um, I can't think of any other entity that we pay into mm -hmm. that we get so much out of. And there's, you know, it's transportation, it's planning. Um, it's our comprehensive plan rewrites, like everything that we need to do. There's somebody at CCRPC who can do it with us. Um, so I really just want to emphasize that this report is just the tip of the iceberg of all the things that CCRPC provides for all of the entities in Chittenden County. But it's it's really impressive. And um, I, for one, am always very grateful for the expertise that's right at our fingertips. We just mm -hmm. need to pick up the phone and you guys are right there. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. Um, and I do just want to add, it's in the report, but I don't I don't think you said it, that the um, transit-oriented development project, which for us here locally, we're calling it Connect the Junction, um, that is a $100,000 project that is required no ma local match mm -hmm. at all for mm -hmm. the city. So very much appreciate that. <laughs> work for yeah. sure which to put it in fund budget terms is basically a percent increase that we didn't need to do to have that work done mm -hmm. on the right. tax bill so that is a huge huge thing in right. and of itself good I'm, I'm really glad that the city is able to take advantage of that um, so good and thank you for the kind words uh, much appreciated um charlie just one second amber did you oh, before you continue sorry amber did you have a comment yeah charlie i was wondering if maybe you could speak to the um Chittenden County O and D transportation program a little bit and what that is and and how the benefit to um, it indicates in here that there was 361 trips uh, provided to Essex Junction residents as part of that program. Yeah, um, so we don't actually. We, this is a little bit of a thing that we help um, support, but we don't actually provide. Uh, so our staff. Uh, provides the forum VTrans actually requires us to provide a forum for the. Um, older adults and persons with disabilities are getting used to this, that new label. It used to be just the elderly and disabled service. Um, and um, so we get all the providers together and you got to make sure they're working well. GMT is actually funding that, right? And I'm, well, and you are also, I expect funding those rides um, in, uh, and so we just really wanted to report um, what, what number of trips are happening in each one of the towns with, a, with that service. Um, so I don't know a lot more beyond that, but happy to, if there's a more specific question, let me know, or we could have somebody, you know, get back to you with more detail. Yeah. I was curious when I read that. I wasn't sure if that's SSTA. Yes. That, it is. Okay. Oh, awesome. Thank yep. you. That's a good point. I think uh, we should probably make that a little more clear in our uh, reporting. Yeah. Um, you're not the first one to ask me that question. So thank you. <laughs> um, in uh, in the FY25 work program, you only asked for one project uh, with the Pearl Street um, scoping. Um, I don't know if that started yet, but that's in our program for this year. Um, and then uh, congratulations on finishing the Crescent Connector. It only took a few weeks, I think, to get that done. A couple months, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, I've been here long enough. I do remember when that started up. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Uh, but it really, it's terrific for the city that uh, to get that done. It's great. Um, and uh, the um, the last couple pages are a kind of apologies a long list of activities that we undertake regionally without regard to any specific municipality. Um, the first one is talking about our, our regional ECOS plan. And I'll um, we, we've been doing some work to start that up, but uh, let me come back to that because um, there's more that's going to happen. Um, equity work, I heard you mention earlier, the EPIC program, and um, I was uh, sympathizing with you um, and um, Regina, we're actually working on a staff survey to mm -hmm. kind of like follow up that we intend to do annually that I will, uh, particularly if you yep. prompt me, I will, <laughs> I will share it with you. Um, but yeah, you know, where I think we're, um, also, you know, I think trying to, um, deal with just, there's just more work on staff. I don't know. I'm assuming it's probably the same for the city staff, but there's, there's been a lot of federal money that's flowed and, but there's also increasing demands, whether from the state or feds. And there's just a lot of work on you know, the public sector staff right now. Um, and it's, you know, it's causing some pressures in workplaces, even in ours, uh, you know, which is somewhat smaller or we're 20 people, but it's, it's a real dynamic that's going on. So um, I think we're all kind of trying to work through those issues of how to make things work as well as possible for the staff and still provide you know, as great service as we can. Um, uh, housing issues, um, I think in October, we'll have a, another press event on building homes together. Um, this uh, is only reporting the 22, the 2022 numbers uh, for what was built. We do have the 2023 numbers, but we'll get those out in the next few weeks. It was a little bit more than 22, but still not close to our thousand units a year. Um, and I think I'll skip the rest of these unless you have something specific you want to ask about or or comment on. Do. Yes, sir. So on the housing piece. Yes. And I know that you the 2023 numbers aren't here. It's been my sense, and so I just want to get your sense of it, um, that while moves have been made statutorily for to increase more housing, it doesn't feel like that is open up the faucet and things are just being built. Would that be your similar assessment on gut feel? And do you have any idea or thoughts around if there's anything that our municipality should be considering in order to help open up that spigot to make uh, more housing happen? Yeah, I, I think that's, I think that's a pretty accurate assessment. Um, and I know um, when I was testifying, they made regulatory changes, right? Uh, Act Act forty seven in la in twenty three, and then Act one eighty one this year. The first time was impacting municipal zoning. I think uh, the city's in compliance with those laws now. I think, um, and then Act one eighty one, of course, was affecting Act two fifty. Um, and I did testify a few times on you know both those and. You know, one of the things that I was trying to communicate to the legislature is the regulatory side is not necessarily a quick fix uh, because we really just don't have the labor force in the construction industry isn't here right now. I haven't, I need to look at these numbers because uh, this has come up a few times now, but you know, we're probably, I'm going to guess maybe a quarter of the people in those jobs that there were 30 years ago. And so it's going to take a little while for that industry to build back up. Um, I think it's really important, though, these regulatory changes, not not just from you know reducing regulatory red tape, but also just uh, the public relations of it. Of you know, Vermont is open to housing construction, which, frankly, I got here 16 years ago. That really wasn't the message I was getting from Vermont. It was not maybe 180 degrees, but maybe 170 degrees opposite of that. <laughs> you know, like we're not really that supportive of development. Um, so I, th I think I've been encouraged anyway that, you know, even the legislature has been trying to address it the last couple of years, because uh, frankly, for the first you know, 10 or 15 years I was here, the, the kind of what there was almost what housing problem, um, even though we were, and I'm kind of hearkening back to like 2011, we were, 
uh, surveying employers. Sorry, I'm pointing at Regina because <laughs> we work together. So uh, um, <laughs> um, you may recall. Um, but um, but we but we surveyed employers and. You know, they used to say that it was like workforce skills and training that was preventing them from expanding their employment. And even then, and this is, you know, 12, 14 years ago, they started saying, no, it's the lack of housing is the reason we can't grow our companies. And so it's been really on my mind for quite some time. And I'm I'm just encouraged, sorry, you should phrase this with a positive. I'm encouraged the legislature has grabbed a hold of it and is really trying to address it and do things. Um, but I, I don't think it's going to be quick. You know, frankly, this Building Homes Together campaign was was born out of that too. Like, you know, we're really not doing enough to uh, communicate to the public. This issue is real and we all need to lean into supporting more housing construction, not just in Cheney County, statewide. Yeah. Um, so. Thanks. So. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's encouraging. So um, on, on that note, <laughs> Uh, which is a good segue into the last two pages here that I provided attached to the report is this uh, a summary of Act 181. Um, you know, take this, uh, realize that this is from the perspective of the Regional Planning Commission. This is not a summary of the whole bill. Mm -hmm. This is just um, kind of a short summary of the things that were pertinent to what we are required to do. Um, the big change, of course, in Act 250 was um, starting the shift from just a numbers base. If you have too many housing units, we're going to subject you to more regulation, which is old Act 250, um, right? Anything more than 10 units, you're in. Uh, didn't matter where you were. It could be downtown Essex Junction. If you had 11 units, you know, you're in Act 250. Um, to now location-based. So let's, we've been, the state has been investing in uh, regional and, and municipal plans for the last 30 years. And so now actually using those plans to say, Hey, if if locally and regionally, like that's where we want to grow, then the state should support that by, in this case, like removing regulatory oversight and trust the municipality to zone it and review the development that fits with your vision. Um, so, um, so that's a, a very significant change to Act 250, um, and but it is requiring um, it's going to require more focus and attention on our regional plan future land use map. That map is going to be used to not only determine where Act 250 jurisdiction is, but also where the state designations uh, are land. So uh, there, there won't be a separate process to negotiate your, I think you have a village center, I think at this point. Um, you know, and that used to be in, and an NDA, um, neighborhood development area. Um, but that used to be a negotiation, you know, kind of, with the municipality and state staff um, and then a board, um, which I, I have been sitting on the last few years, um, partly to try to get ready for these changes. <laughs> um, and so a lot more weight on the regional plan future land use map. Um, and so part of my message here today is like, we're gonna be start working on that map over the coming months. Um, and we really need to have um, active engagement and work together with our municipalities to get to the final map. Um, and, you know, we're here to support the municipality and, you know, I'm hoping this is as much bottoms up as it possibly can be. There is statutory language. So we got to kind of match what um, is in your city plan with the statutory language and try to uh, make it work. Um, and I'm going to say what I've said in every municipality so far, I'm as optimistic and, I try as I try to be. I'm sure there's going to be some rubs. Um, I don't know if there will be one in Essex Junction, but there could be. Um, and I just want to make sure that you hear me say, like, we're still the same RPC. We still want to support you, work with you, and uh, even if we get into a difficult conversation at some point, um, I just uh, we're going to know that you guys are coming from the right place, and we're trying to come from the right place, and we'll um, sit down and try to hammer it out, um, work it out. So. Uh, maybe we won't have any rubs, but just in case. Uh, <laughs> this is a... Well, there, there are some aspects, aspects of this where we've we've lost choice in some of this too. Mm -hmm. and there's some small sure. details like, you know, throughout all this where the community actually doesn't really have a say anymore in some of this. And some of that's good and some of that's going to bring up some interesting issues, yeah. I think. Um, I'm not going to get into specifics, but there's a few sort of 
victims that have come down. Yeah. Um, I agree. And, you know, how those are communicated. Um, and some of them have a direct consequence on quality of life in neighborhoods and other things, and especially neighborhoods without HOAs. Um, so yeah, there's, there's some, it'll be interesting next few years to see how that all, um, all right, you're agreeing with we, we might have some rubs. Okay. <laughs> well, no, I don't think there'll be rubs. I think it's more about, you know, interesting conversations with the community to help them understand where some yes. of this is coming from. Yeah. You know, it's not just, uh, you know, uh, you know, your agency, it, yeah. just kind of, this isn't coming out of thin air and maybe a few people on a board. This yeah. is, um, this is the picture now that yeah. we have to play in. This is the field we have to play in. Yeah. And, um, and there's a reason for it. That's, that's all. Yeah. And I think um, like one of those really interesting changes was, um, kind of removing the ability for DRB to negotiate down the number of units mm -hmm. in response to neighbors right now, the legislature said, don't, don't, you know, Stop doing that. Like we want to see as many units get produced. Whatever you zoned it for ought to be able to be allowed. But that's easier said than done, right? Mm -hmm. You know, I've already heard some, you know, even though the DRB can't or shouldn't be negotiating down, you know, developers also have ears and and hearts sometimes too. You know, and they're, you know, I think they're they want to be good neighbors um when they can be. So I, I've already heard some stories like, yeah, even though the developer didn't have to reduce the units, they re reduced the number of units to try to mitigate um, the emotions and uh, happening at the board. So anyway, there's there's a lot to unpack there. Um, so we're going to be starting that process. We have to do, um, so I think, what the legislation called meaningful participation, um, primarily with the municipality, but also um, there's also a focus on what they call environmental justice communities. Um, you may remember they passed an environmental justice bill a few years ago, um, and we have to figure out how to um, analyze or assess environmental benefits and burdens to those um, environmental justice communities. Um, so I don't know what that means yet, but that's going to be like one of those things we got to try to figure out and um, have some um, better thought about it. Um, how we're doing things. I'm hoping that's helpful to everyone involved. Um, and then, um, and then to layer on this, um, also there are housing targets um, that are coming. The state's going to establish one for the, or I guess, the Department of Housing Community Development, but they work for the governor. So the administration is going to establish a statewide housing target, one for each region. And then uh, they have tasked the RPCs to work with our municipalities to break that out, uh, which we've had language in statute for probably 30 years that has been along those lines, but they kind of push it a little bit more firmly um, to make sure that does happen and also track it. Um, at this point, although the word targets sounds a little onerous, um, my view of this is really that it's more um, goal setting and trying to uh, make sure that data is getting collected. So they task uh, the Department of Housing Community Development with collecting annual data of what's happening to really inform policy discussions. Um, and I, I, my sense is that's largely how the legislature was looking at this. Like, we just need more data. Um, Vermont um, does a horrible job of collecting housing data. They don't really know what gets built every year where. Um, and, well, I'll just point out to say that. <laughs> so, so this will be nice if they actually, you know, are able to actually track what is actually happening and where it's happening. Um, and, and there will be more nuance to that. You know, how many of those are affordable units and, uh, how many are multifamily and single family and things like that? But oh, um, you're already collecting that for Chittenden County, though, through the Better Housing Program. We 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 have been yeah. <laughs> kind of for the last yeah since probably 2010. Yeah. Um, yeah. And but but you know when we started that up, we had to go to every town office and really kind of mm -hmm. extract the data. It's not easily reportable. Uh, We've, well, got, we, we've gotten we, better now. Like, you yeah, know, now the towns are used to us asking for it. And they're like, okay, yeah, I got that report. Yeah. Here you go. Uh, but we're the exception around the state. I mean, you helped us out uh, coming up with data for the rental registry proposal, which is still out there. Yeah. Um, and I think, you know, some of us feel the same way. I think that we, as we approach or exceed a 50% rental market mm -hmm. in this community, you know, getting our heads around that data and having that yeah. information. Um, is really becoming more, it feels like it's becoming more and more important. Absolutely. And certainly I think in some of the neighborhoods you're starting to see impacts that um, people are starting to worry about. So anyway, that data thing is just 
Yeah, it, it's real. I mean, um, and it's hard to make good decisions without good data. Um, Along those lines, let me, is there going to be within that data, are we going to, is there going to be some identifiers around, because we're going to identify ownership and rental, but is there going to be any identification around short-term, long-term? Yeah, I, I'm, I don't know. Um, I, I can't remember if that specific uh, subgroup was identified in the statute. It could be, and I'm just not remembering it. Um, you know, like Airbnb, I guess, um, I think VHFA, the Vermont Housing Finance Agency, I think is able to tap into Airbnb and kind of see some of that. So I know some of it's getting collected and looked at, um, but yeah, there's a lot of yeah, second homes, Airbnb, there's a lot of um, dynamics in the Vermont housing market. Uh, that can be challenging. I mean, we're somewhat fortunate in Chinook County. We don't have as many second homes or, you know, the second homes we probably had on Mallets Bay 30 years ago have all been converted to year round and yeah. things mm -hmm. like that. Uh, but also just a reflection of how broken our housing market has been probably for 25 years. Um, which, which agency had that? Uh, Vermont Housing Finance Agency. Uh, they have a website called housingdata.org. Um, Sounds like and, the team, Marcus. Thank you. The last page, sorry, just, just to give you a heads up about um, what the phases that we're going to be kind of going through. Uh, we've started the internal work was phase one. This is really the first step in phase two of just making sure you're aware of these requirements and that we have to start this process. Um, we are intending to um, get this done, we hope, kind of by next summer, so really kind of the next Probably in the more intense time is probably going to be January till June um, time frame. Um, and, um, and we are hoping to kind of get our plan wrapped up by the end of the calendar year. Um, we have a, a lengthy approval process, but we'll hope, I'm hoping that we're at least done with the substance uh, by then. Um, phase three, we're talking about um, over this winter, spring, trying to figure out how to do this assessment of environmental benefits and burdens. Um, later this winter, we will come to you with a draft map or probably your planning commission. And I think part of what I want to ask you is like, is there, we'll probably focus mostly with your planning commission, unless you direct us otherwise, or you want to be more involved. Let us know if there's other bodies within the town or, or even nonprofit organizations or groups that we should communicate with while we're working on this. Uh, please let us know you know, tonight or, or later, um, I think we'll talk about it and get back to you for sure. Yeah, yeah, please. Yeah, appreciate that very much. Um, so we'll do the draft map and then we'll, um, once we kind of feel like there were maps pretty close and we'll see how well the housing targets lay into it. And, you know, I think in a place like a subjunction, it shouldn't be too hard. You know, it's not like you have a, a huge variety of landscape. Um, and by that, I mean, you don't have huge rural areas where you're kind of wondering where to run your sewer or water lines. Um, and uh, and then yeah, hopefully we're done summertime. So again, this I have crossed fingers and toes somewhere <laughs> that it goes that smoothly. Um, but just I really wanted you to be aware and, and know that uh, you know we want to be a good partner in this work. So and thank you. No, thank you. Thank um, you. Can I just just add one thing? Um, so that timing for us aligns fairly well because our comprehensive plan um, needs to start. I think it goes through 2027. So we basically will start it in 2025 through 2026. So we will be able to essentially kind of pick that up and then take it right on over to our comprehensive plan and get it incorporated um, yeah, great. in theory. Yeah, that is great. And I, there is um, there will be one specific um, decision point that you'll have to make during this process. And I don't know if it's called out here, but we do need... Um, to have um, the the city council vote on whether you want to be uh, to have Act 250 exemption, um, and so uh, the legislature kind of said, you know, don't don't just map it and assume. Let's ask if they want Act 250 uh, to apply or not. Um, so there will be at some point in here, you know, probably more like next summer, maybe next fall. Um, there will be a specific vote that we'll need uh, to get from you. you know, either way, I mean, we're whatever uh, makes sense to you. Um, so I should note that as well. The only other thing that I had, and this sounds like way, way out into the future, <clears throat> but in your report, you talked about, you know, there was a small bit in there about brownfields. Mm -hmm. um, and I did look at the site. Um, 
which was interesting. It wasn't much there, thankfully. Um, but there have been some some um, recent issues around PFAS. Mm -hmm. um, we have a giant plant here that um, that seems to be a thing for, um, and it sort of has me, you know, ten to thirty years out, wondering um, what's the future of that property. Um, what if the property sells? What's the actual status? Mm. I don't know what kind of work CCRPC does to sort of establish that, or if it's just more of a, we gather data and we're presenting it here, or if there's more of an active sort of look. I'm not making a particular request for work or anything like that, but I'm just kind of wondering what your agency's role is and sort of keeping an eye on those things, determining those things, participating in that evaluation. Um, yeah, um, and we really work with GBIC, you know, I think, you know, and this, um, from the time I got here 16 years ago, there's you know, kind of is IBM staying or going, you know, what if they close, um, you know, and then of course the transition to global foundries and, you know, um, so I, I was encouraged to see, you know, kind of a significant investment that global foundries was making, I think, or at least they announced a big investment and they got some a big federal grant. So that was encouraging to me that, yeah, probably is that 20 to 30 year horizon. Cause yeah, 15, 20 years ago, we were like, geez, yeah. they haven't invested in a while. What's going to happen. Um, and then, you know, on the brownfields, yeah, it is kind of a unique situation. I mean, they're kind of a city unto themselves where they have their own sewer plant and, mm -hmm. um, they have their own, I don't know if it's a super fun site, but a significant brownfield site on their property. Um, yeah, and it wasn't on the map and it's sort of a, it feels like a black hole for information. So I'm just sort of, mm. you know, what, what I would hate to see happen. And yeah. again, this sounds far-fetched, but what I'd hate to see happen is we wake up one day and now we're wondering who has responsibility for this, for the cleanup and the site. And, well, the uh, property owners are going to retain that. Um, yeah. You know, I mean, it only goes away after they clean it up or um, if someone is silly enough to buy it without making, it, making sure it's cleaned up first. Um, right? I mean, IBM still has some liability on that site that Global Foundries didn't take, I think, uh, where IBM was, I don't know, what, uh, depositing materials uh over the years um but and i don't know that we know a lot about it because they i don't think they've asked for public money and so you know until they do that it's it's hard to know yeah okay i guess yeah i'm just wondering if i mean you're acknowledging that they probably have a large brownfield site there it wasn't on the, it wasn't the data's not out there yeah so it, no. it feels uncomfortable that <clears throat> as we get more dense around that property and it gets older that we're not knowing um what's there and what the what the situation is over time. Nothing we have to just fix tonight, right? Yeah, it's just, yeah. You know, yeah. We can uh, maybe well, maybe when you, as you're updating the city plan, we can look at that because I'm I'm pretty sure I know what parcel it is. It's, it's knowable, um, and yeah, it's yeah we can deal deal with that. Yeah, but thank you. I know it's kind of out there, but <laughs> no, no, no. It's... Um, before you leave, I just want to see, there's nobody in the room here, but I want to see if anyone online has any questions around this topic for tonight, Thank you. um, if they want to ask or ask of the council. So if you do, and you're online and you want to raise your hand, we'll wait just a moment for that. I'm not seeing anyone. So Charlie, thank you for joining us tonight. Appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thanks so much for the time. I really, really do appreciate it. Thanks, thanks sure. for all the work that you do and all the staff as well. <laughs> Thank Take you. Care. Thank Appreciate you very it. much. I'm glad you found us. Yes. <laughs> uh, where are we? 5C, discussion and consideration of Green Mountain Transit Service reduction comments. So in your packet, you've got um, a draft letter, um, as we've already just talked about with, um, with Charlie, you know, I'm not sure GMT itself is quite the right uh, audience ultimately for these comments, but I think it's important to just get them on the record all the same. Um, and then uh, I think we should also prepare closer to January that we're sending another letter to the legislature uh, mm -hmm. directly. So um, you've got the draft in there. Any suggestions, edits, changes? Um, happy to make those. Right. I think it's well said. Yeah, thank you for that, Regina. I think okay. um, my only suggestion I already provided with adding the senators. Um, 
Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we will um, uh, CC both Greg Duggan at the town and Eric Wells in the uh, town of Williston. They already have this draft letter, but I didn't CC them officially, so I'll do that. And then also our um, rep, our senators as well, not just our reps. Mm -hmm. I thought it was very well laid out. Yep. I think that's it. Um, doesn't seem like any of us have any comments or questions. Um, seems fairly straightforward. Does anyone online have any comments or questions on this? Um, we're basically talking about a, a letter of feedback to Green Mountain Transit on what we believe it will be the impacts of the proposed cuts. Um, that letter is in our packet. Not seeing any comments or hands raised, excuse me, for comment online. So um, does this require? Yes. Go for it. I will move that the council approve the letter uh, authorized uh, to authorize the council president to sign the letter on the council's behalf and submit it to GMT. Thank you. That's Second. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, motion passes unanimously. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, 5D, um, discussion and consideration of Vermont League of Cities and Towns annual meeting voting delegate. So uh, we need a voting delegate um, for the three different annual meetings um, associated with Vermont League of Cities and Towns. And so that um, meeting is a virtual meeting on Tuesday, October 1st from 3 to 4.30. Uh, the following day is the physical day in uh, Killington. Um, so we need um, someone who's available at that time. Um, and so also I've attached here just so you've got it. Um, every other year, VLCT puts this municipal policy statement together and they do it with pretty significant amount of effort, um, probably a number of different committees, probably a hundred different municipal reps participating in this. Um, and they uh, adopt it at their board level and then they do bring it to the full body during the annual meeting. Um, so for this year, this delegate will be voting on that as well. Um, and you know, there's a lot in there, 19 pages, <laughs> it's a lot of stuff. Um, but this is the basis for the way they interact with the legislature on that. Yeah, yeah. And not having done this before myself, um, I don't think, is there ever a discussion about modifying any of this or is it largely please just vote it up or down at these sessions, does anybody know? Um, I don't I've have any proposed it. changes. I'm just curious. Yeah, like, no, I've there's... done it. And there's been some lively discussion. Okay. But, um, and once or twice I've seen some minor editing from the floor, but really not, not, not much generally. because there's engagement ahead of time. Right. Okay. I was just kind of curious about it. I know. I read it. I don't have any major disagreements with. Mm. I, I am not available at that time. So I'm just going to start the bidding. Is, well, are any of you going to the town fair the next day? I am likely not able to. At Killington. Okay. I potentially can, but I won't know until yeah. Monday of next week. Okay. Yeah, if I do it, it'll be very last minute, unfortunately. Although I hear the leaves will be lovely then. <laughs> I mean, not the biking will probably be tremendous the next day. So. Um, I think I was the city's represent representative last time. Yeah. But um, I can be there online on three o'clock on the first. Sold. So. <laughs> Where's the motion? <laughs> yes, I recommend that the city council <laughs> as the voting delegate for VLCT, PA, CIF, and BERB. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Elaine, no for doing problem. that. Appreciate it. For the record, it's yeah. passive and boom. Right. <laughs> I imagine, but I'm, yeah. Yeah. No, you know, it's uh, it's yeah. It's in all caps. I just want to let you know there is a shortcut. And again, for those uh, those online watching um, or listening, 
it's another interesting document if you have the time to look at. Um, the LC does an awful lot of lobbying on municipalities' behalf, so an awful lot. And this is a really interesting look at what they'll be working with over the next couple of years, if you're into that sort of thing. All right. Um, next item is an executive session. So I will entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. I'll second. Okay. Same seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Council member comments and city manager report. Okay. So um, thank you for that governance purpose statement. So uh, we have out advertised already the Recreation Advisory Committee. And now that we've got that, the Governance Committee purpose statement, we will get that advertised as well. So we've got uh, folks at home listening. We've got two committees that uh, we'll be looking for um, folks to help with, which will be great. Um, also, um, Elaine uh, gave this info to the council earlier, last night, maybe. Um, and I have a quote from Susan <laughs> McNamara Hill. Um, so again, this is not me saying this. I'm Susan right now. Okay. Uh, I was honored last week at the Vermont Municipal Clerks and Treasurers Association annual meeting by receiving the award of 2024 Treasurer of the Year. I was not given names, but I can tell from the introduction from the presenter that I was nominated by members of the city council and others. I would like to thank everyone for your nomination and, net, and let you know how honored and humbled I was to receive this award. It has been a long haul over all the ins and outs of merger, consolidation, separation. I cannot accept this award on my own, but also on behalf of the teams that I've worked with both in the town of Essex and village city of Essex Junction. Thank you again for your kind words and uh, for expressing your appreciation of the work we have done. So nice. Very well served. Yeah. Very well served. Yes. She is fantastic. <laughs> um, and Ashley will be doing a press release on that. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for moving that forward, Lynn. Oh, it's my pleasure and honor to uplift uh, Susan. She's an amazing clerk. Um, okay, Chelsea um, ho hosted a tour of 15 water quality professionals on Tuesday as part of the Green Mountain Water Environment Association. Uh, so she highlighted the energy conservation and sustainability measures at the, I have to always try very hard at this, Water Resource Recovery Facility. Yeah. Um, and on Friday, she'll be giving a tour to the Essex High School Advanced Placement Environmental Science class, which has over 25 students this year. So wow. that'll be exciting. Um, so Charlie talked about the transit-oriented development project. For us, that is the Connect the Junction project. Um, big time period for folks to participate in that is the charrette, which we will be doing from October 4th through October 7th. That will include a booth at the homecoming game on Friday night, the 4th. There will be a kickoff presentation and activities during the day on Saturday, the 5th. Um, and we will be doing a closing presentation on Monday, the 7th. Um, so hopefully folks can participate in that. Um, Crescent Connector. We met the substantial completion as of September 18th. Uh, that does not mean it's totally, totally done. There's a punch list of items and cleanup work to be done, um, including uh, continuing to refine the lights to make sure they are functioning um, as best they can. Um, and we are planning a ribbon cutting ceremony for the road on Monday, October 7th at 10 a.m. Big scissors. Big scissors. I'd be happy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, Green Mountain Transit, thanks, Tim, for alerting me of this. Uh, they have added more listening sessions to their um, uh, to their process of their draft service reduction plan and trying to get out and talk with folks. 
So that includes um, a location at Essex Town Hall, October 4th at 4 p.m. That's over at 80 on Main Street. They'll also be in the Montpelier Transit Center on the 8th at 4 p.m. And then a Zoom meeting on the 9th at 5 p.m. So more opportunities to hear more about that if folks are looking for that. Um, and we are hosting the city council meeting tonight in the coal board room in the Brownell library. Um, because we are beginning the renovations over at the two Lincoln hall. And I just want to thank the library for hosting many things <laughs> <laughs> over the coming, uh, eight months or so. So, um, very much appreciate that. Yes. Thank you. Yes. That's it. Great. All right. Well, I will entertain the executive session motions. I move that the city council make the specific finding that premature disclosure of the contractual matters would place the city at a substantial disadvantage. I move that. Oh. Yeah, I see it. Okay. Go ahead. We'll do it after. Do I need to sorry. Why don't you, why don't you re remove your motion? Okay. I will remove my motion. Lisa, how are you? Hi, thank you. I'm sorry. I meant to do this in the beginning and I forgot and didn't okay. remember until Regina talked about the construction starting. Several people have been wondering, I don't know why they're asking me, but if the ballot box is in a different location because of construction, because ballots will be arriving in our mailboxes any day now. Is the ballot box still right there near the senior center door or the former senior center door? Correct. The ballot box is just to the right of the former senior center entry to two Lincoln. So right in between the two Lincoln building and the fire station. Um, it's a white standalone box on its own and um, hopefully folks can find it. Right. It'll, it'll be accessible through election day, yes. regardless of the construction that's starting. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. When we really get into con the construction, this is a good question. When the construction really starts in full, likely early November, there will be parking for the two Lincoln offices in front of the fire station. So on the side, right? Yeah. yeah. So you'll be able to access the ballot box by parking at the fire station um, and it's right there. So hopefully it'll be- It should be 15 minutes. Yes, parking. that is limited parking because- uh, The fire you know, people department that, yeah, needs- Coming and going, yes. <laughs> right, okay, thank you very much. People were we'll, really getting we'll also concerned. We'll be communicating that. And I, I kind of yeah. know that we'll, if people- We'll, we'll keep communicating that for you. Thank you. I also kind of know that Sorry. if people start um, questioning it a lot, Tim will jump in about why parking in front of the fire engines is only for a few minutes. Thank you. I'm guessing you're not coming back. Thank you. We are not. Thank you. Thanks. Have a good night. Hey, Marcus. I move that the city council make the specific finding that premature disclosure of the contractual matters would place the city at a substantial disadvantage. I move that the city council enter into executive session to discuss a contract pursuant to 1 VSA 313 A1A to include the city council, city manager, and assistant recreation director. I'll second it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great. Motion passes unanimously. We are not coming back, uh, so we will adjourn from executive session. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us.